Hello, and welcome to this WaveRazor Getting Started video. I'm Taiho Yamada, and over the next few minutes, we'll quickly discuss how to use WaveRazor's controls. Starting in the upper left-hand corner, clicking on the mock logo brings up the About box. Next, you'll find the Patch Browser. Uh, this is the first item in our toolbar. You can click on the right and left triangles to increment and decrement the patches. Or you can click on the patch name to open the browser. Banks are selected on the left. And uh, clicking on a patch name selects it for our edition. Double clicking selects the patch and closes the browser. Moving right on the toolbar, you'll find the save icon. And here you can save a patch to your user bank, rename it, or delete it. This is also where you can move patches into or out of WaveRazor using the import and export commands. Next, you'll find the preferences icon. Clicking this brings up a page where you can register or unlock your copy of WaveRazor. This is also where you change your language and theme. You can also change the number of voices available and their buffer size in order to optimize your CPU performance. After the preferences, we find the Arpeggiator browser, which works exactly like the patch browser, except without a categorization. The numbers uh, signify the bar and note values, and you can turn the ARP on and off just below uh, with the on-off button. You can also set your BPM by clicking and dragging, or you can double-click and type it in. You also have a setting for internal sync or external, so you can synchronize to your host. Next up, the question mark opens the WaveRazor Quick Start Guide PDF, and the exclamation point acts as an all notes off switch. Above this area are meters for the number of voices sounding and the percentage of processing power being used. Just below the patch browser, we have some controls for oscillators and the central waveform display. The three red triangles enable and disable the oscillators, while the blue triangles select them for viewing and editing. The single blue triangle sets the display to oscilloscope mode. Now the oscilloscope has several controls for viewing. The arrows around the ring zoom in and out of the waveform, both in amplitude and frequency and the four circles along the bottom select different trigger modes, while the pause button freezes the waveform. When you select an oscillator for editing, the number of slices in the wave is represented by the segments around the ring. You can click on a segment to start editing that segment. The segments go in order counterclockwise around the ring, starting from the top. Now once a segment is selected, you can edit its pitch and volume. its phase and DC offset, and the selected waveform. This is the waveform category, and this is the waveform variation. 
Now on either side of the waveform display are two XY controllers called vector controllers. These are assigned to various modulations by the sound designer, but I usually assign them to sweep through the wave index on the left and to change filter cutoff and resonance on the right. Now above the vector controllers are eight macro knobs and two macro buttons that are assigned by the sound designer. And these are used to modulate various aspects of the sound. The knobs, buttons, and vector controllers can all be automated in your host. Rounding out these controls is an FX mix knob and an FX bypass button. And on the left and right sides you'll find input and output level controls and their associated meters. Finally, at the bottom of the synth is a playable keyboard and controls affecting it. The plus and minus button zoom in and zoom out. while the arrow keys shift the section of the keyboard that you're viewing. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching.